Hello everyone and welcome to part 6 of the Create Your Own FPS System for Unity and Playmaker. Let's see where we left off. As you can see we have the enemy that can chase you, takes damage, and the player itself can fire bullets and create a muzzle flash. So in this lesson let's look at how we can give, give the enemy a weapon that can actually damage the player. Alrighty, let's jump out. and Let's dive straight in. As you noticed in the last tutorial, we created a bullet prefab, which you can probably find in here. That's our bullet prefab. So what we want to do is actually duplicate this, and we're going to call this bullet player. And this is going to be the bullet that can damage the player. So before we get moving, let's actually create a new prefab and call this the, um, the enemy to play a bullet. So we, oops. So we know that it's going to be the bullet that will be damaging the player. And let's drag this guy into here. Alrighty, now let's jump into this FSM and let's reverse engineer what we did last time. So all of this is going to be fine because it's still going to fire from the enemy's point of view. So and it's going to be still storing the object that it's going to be hitting and it's going to send a hit event still, so that's all fine. Let's jump to this one except in this event we want it to be tagging the player so if it is the player is if it hits the player then we're going to say damage the player so we're going to have to set up a damage system and health system for the player all right so let's just jump out of this and let's just jump to the player and let's set up a health system so let's just set up a quick health system create a new health fsm and we're going to say for the first state set health and create a new global variable. This is just going to make it easier to navigate the variable around for the player, around the um, game. So that's all fine. And then we're going to go back to the state and we're going to say set float. And that's the one we want. And you'll notice that it says none, but if you go to globals, you can now say set the health of the player. And then this way in any FSM, you can actually set um, this float. So let's set his health to 10. And let's say it's when it's finished. And let's move on. And we'll call this guy idle. Now let's create a new state. And we're going to call this get hit. So when the player gets hit, we're going to send an event to get hit and create a global transition to this event and then once that's done say finished and then once we say bullet send event to get hit we want it to subtract the float so let's go back to the global and health player and we want to subtract one from his total health so at the start of the game when it loads we're going to set his health to 10 and every time he gets hit we're going to subtract one from that and then say it's finished. And then what we want to do is say float compare. And we want to be comparing the global float of the player. And if it's going to be equal to zero, let's just call this another event called die and put that in idle. Alrighty, so if it's equal to zero, he's going to die. And if it's less than zero, he's going to die in case he gets hit with lots of bullets and it drops it to minus one. So we're going to say compare every frame. And let's create a new um, state, drop that in there. And let's just create destroy. Destroy self. Well, actually, we don't even need to destroy him because he's just going to restart the level. So let's just restart the level. So if he dies, we're going to restart the level. And you could also put another state in and say wait and then trigger a ragdoll or an explosion or something depending on what um, kind of player your guy is, if he's a robot or if he's a human or something. You can just um, do that yourself. So let's just say restart level. We'll just call restart. And that's pretty much our simple little system going on there. Alrighty, so let's jump back to our bullet for our player. Let's click apply just to make sure we're still updating our prefab. Let's jump in here. Let's maybe we'll change the event to damage whoop, damage the player just so we don't get confused with which one we're editing. As you can see it updated 
our um, system for us. So that's all, all good. So let's jump in here. We're going to specify a test object. That is all fine. The FSM name was health, I believe. Not Heath, health. Now let's just double check that that's what it was called, health. And our thing was called to get hit. So we want to make sure it's spelled exactly the same. It can't even have a different capital or anything because that will throw it off. Which is pretty much the same as what we wrote for the other one. And same thing, then once it's done, it will destroy it, or if it doesn't hit the player, it's still going to destroy it. Lovely. Alrighty, now we need to give the enemy a weapon. So let's come into the enemy. And this is the way he's facing, because that's his forward direction. So let's just create a new cube. Let's scale this guy down. And let's kind of position it on his side. And let's call this guy gun. And let's create a empty object. And this will be the let's press F to focus on that. Zoom in. And let's just bring it out forward a bit. And let's call this bullet spawn point. Lovely. And let's come into our AI system. Alrighty, so technically if he's moving towards the player, we want him to be saying, or sending a bull, saying, yes, you can now shoot. So let's say, um, is in sight. And put that in inspector, and let's just put it, make this event set bull value. And say in sight, yes. And when he's back here, let's set him to say, uh, no. So set this one and have that ticked off. So whenever he's moving towards player, that's when he's allowed to shoot. And when he's not, let's tick it off. So basically what this is saying is we're going to be creating a FSM for the rifle that says, hey, whenever this bull value is checked, that's when I'm allowed to fire the gun. And when it's not, that's when we we're not allowed to fire the gun. So the guy's just going to, he's not going to be walking around firing the gun at no one. Alrighty, so let's go and create a new FSM. And this FSM will be called Weapon. Alrighty. And we're going to say Get FSM Bull. And we're going to be using the Owner's Bull, which is all fine. So let's create a, let's create a Bull event. And we're going to say Is In Sight, just to compare. And we're going to say, get the AI system, get the is in sight. We're going to save that as the same thing, every frame. And we're going to do a bull test. So let's go for a bull test. So whenever the bull is in sight, we're going to say, if it's true, let's create an event to say, fire, fire gun. So let's drop that event down. Let's create two more events. And we're going to say, uh, keep firing. And let's pop that in here. Connect this guy to this guy. Keep this guy to this guy. And then put two finished events down. This is just laying the groundwork for the FSM that we're doing. Um, let's just put firing, firing one. And firing two. Alrighty, it seems to be sort of almost there. Alrighty, so if it's true, we're going to start firing the gun every frame. Let's make sure if it's false, it can just stay there. It's not going to go anywhere. Alrighty. Now we want to just copy these two across. Copy and paste. And let's, if it's false, let's say it's finished. Paste this guy in here. And if it's false, we're going to be finished. So basically, these two will be alternating, so it can be fire the gun, wait, fire the gun, wait. And then if any of these states is um, he's not allowed to fire, we'll send it back to idle. Alrighty. So let's put down a weight of zero point. This is like you can pretty much adjust this to make it fairer for the, the player. But let's make it 0 0.3. So every 0 0.3 seconds he will fire the gun and then he will go to keep firing. So let's put another weight down. Let's make this one 0 0.6 and put that to keep firing. 
Alrighty, now we're going to say create, create, create object, and at the spawn point that we created for the rifle, let's drop this in at the spawn point and the game object. Make sure you drag out the prefab that we created at the start, and this will allow you to create the bullet at that spawn point. And now we should be pretty much set up to give it a quick test and see how it goes. So let's press play. And let's see, and look, he's firing at us. Now let's run away. Run away like a little girl. And let's see what our health is. We didn't say check. Let's just turn this off. Let's, um, let's um, create some sort of GUI for us so we can actually see um, what our health will be. So let's go to our player system, create a UI, get a canvas. And under our canvas, let's just create some text. Press F to focus on it, zoom out, and let's scale this guy up. Well, actually, no, let's not scale that guy up. Let's change the color and increase the font size, and that will reduce the, um, the blur that you get, and that's how you get crisper text. I had to do a bit of fiddling around to find that out. And if you go to game view, then you can see where it's going to be positioned. And this is what we're going to be giving our health um, set as. So let's just change this guy to health and jump back to our canvas and we're going to do a quick FSM to get the float value. So call this health canvas. Sure, that's great. And go to float. Oh, actually, let's just say um, let's create this float and string, because we're going to be setting a string value. A string is something that we can show in the GUI. And we're going to call this guy canvas. Alrighty, so we're going to say float to string, or float to integer. So we're going to take out this guy. And we didn't really need this float. Let's just change this float into an integer. So an integer is a full number, so this will make sure that we're not getting 9.99999 or 8.888. This is always going to round it to the nearest number for us. And then we're going to say integer, so integer to, whoop, not to, to string. So this is going to change our full number into the string value that we can use for our thing and make sure it's every frame. And then let's just drag our just make sure you lock it so we don't lose our guy. Click on health, drag our text script in, drop it in and say set the property and we're going to set the property of the text to the string value that we just created and say every frame. So now you can actually change and update how much health we have. So if we press play, play now. All right, we're getting 10. Oh, there we go. Now it's working. Don't know why um, that was a big problem. So now we're actually getting damaged and if we reach zero, we should die. So let's... Um, Oh, he's on to us. All right. So we can do some damage. He can do some damage. Oh, I've only got one health. And let's watch him kill us. And we have restarted. And the reason for the level looking weird is because um, the lighting wasn't fully baked in. So um, that seems to screw up when you actually restart the level. So if um, this happens to you, just make sure you go into your lighting. And make sure it's not set to auto. Make sure you just build it. And that will ensure that when you restart the level, you don't get um, your light maps lost. Alrighty, everyone, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next part. And I'm not sure what I'll be doing in that part, but I'm sure we'll get there. I think I might introduce some custom models and maybe implement a jump feature for the player, so that way we can actually set up um, some different areas in the map, as well as maybe put some more enemies around with some different abilities and that's going to be all fun and games so until then i'll catch you next time thanks for watching and i hope you have a great day okay, bye